Why are some inverters more expensive than others? That's what we're going to find out in this episode. So today I have three different power inverters to test out. We've got a 12 volt, 1000 to 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. We have a 2000 watt modified sine wave inverter. And then we have the Victron Energy, which is a 24 volt, 1200 watt uh, pure sine wave inverter. So let's look at the first impression of these. If we look at the Roar Rat, we can see that it is an aluminum chassis, but it uses cheap components like this power switch here. And the 12 volt connections are these little screw thumbnails. And I've already had this one back out using it. That doesn't make a very good connection. And it has a small little fan and not much heat sink to keep it cool. If we move to the TV Nikid, it is actually a heavier unit with a bigger heat sink, has dual fans. It still uses a cheap power switch with two modes, has a little LCD display there. We do have two fans to help keep it cool, but one thing I do not like is the power connections. Those are pretty exposed and I think could cause an issue. And if you look at the Victron Energy, much heavier unit. It uses a little better of a power switch, but it's still a cheap plastic power switch. But the battery connections are definitely much more secure. You have a remote connection as well in the VE Direct, which is handy. This user unit does not have a fan, but when we take a look inside, you'll see why. Looking at the inside of the inverters tells quite the story. Looking at the Roar Brat, we can see that it uses lower quality transformers, and other components. Even though it's a pure sine wave inverter, it won't be able to handle high inductive loads. It does use fuses on the inside, but it's not the best quality either. Looking at the TV Nikid, it does have better transformers, much better quality construction. It does not have internal fuses, but you have to remember this is the modified sine wave inverter. And lastly, looking at the Victron Energy, we can see it's a totally different design. Having this massive Torrid transformer allows it to handle high inductive loads with ease. You do have a better quality internal fuse, and the construction is just far superior. So next, I want to hook the three of them up to a battery and connect them to an oscilloscope so we can look at their power output. So the most important things when choosing an inverter is its reliability and its clean power. So what I've done is I've hooked the oscilloscope up to a 24 volt transformer. So this takes 110 volt down to 24 volt and gives us isolation. So I can safely measure the output of the inverter on my oscilloscope. And we're looking to see if it's a pure sine wave. So I'll turn on the, so I'll turn on the roar bat. What a weird name. And we'll plug in the transformer. And you can see on the oscilloscope that we are getting a pure sine wave. So that is clean, noise-free energy. So that's not too bad. But I will tell you with the Roar Bat, I'm not going to be doing load testing in this video, but I do know that it does not do 1,000 watts as it claims. It definitely doesn't do a peak of 2,000 watts. It seems to shut down around 600 watts. So if you only need a 600 watt inverter with clean power, this is a cheap solution but I think your radios deserve better than this. Now we're going to test the TV Nikid. This doesn't say that it's a pure sine wave inverter, so I'm pretty sure it's a modified sine wave inverter, but we're going to find out real fast. And absolutely, you can see that we are a modified sine wave. We don't have that curved sine wave that you should get from a pure sine wave inverter. This is nothing but noise. You're not going to run a computer. You're not going to run radios on this. You don't even want to try to run an air conditioner because you could damage the electrical components in it. So what can you use a modified sine wave inverter for? You can use it for anything with a motor that doesn't have an electronic circuit board. If there's any kind of digital board in there that has any processing to do, this will wreak complete havoc on it. So you could run something like an oil filled heater, uh, a drill, a saw on a work site. That is about all these are good for. So you definitely don't want to use these in your ham shack or if you're trying to power your house, you're not going to run your TV on it. You'll see I brought out a second battery so I can run 24 volts into this inverter. 
The reason I chose a 24 volt inverter is so I could use smaller gauge cable in my solar system that I'm building you can check out in this video. You can check out in this video. And let's turn it on. Much quieter, no fan noise. You could clearly see the pure sine wave. That means we have no noise with this. And I would expect that from Victron Energy. That's why I've chose them for my solar ham build. Now I am running a 24 volt inverter, but Signature Solar carries the Victron Energy inverters in 12 volt, 24 volt, or 48 volt. So you could choose the one for your needs. I'll put a link in the description where you could get yours. The other advantage with Victron Energy is that it has the VE Direct port, which could connect into their ecosystem, or you could run a separate Bluetooth dongle so you could monitor the performance of your inverter on your phone. For a geek like me, that's perfect. So absolutely, the Victron does cost more money. And if you're trying to be cheap, you may be able to get by with one of the other inverters. But if you're spending thousands on a computer or thousands on your ham radio gear, why wouldn't you spend a couple hundred more dollars and get a quality inverter? You may be wondering how you could tell that this is clean power. And like I said, it's because of the smooth curve. But just to show you, I have a lot of noise coming in on my AC power for my house. So I'm going to disconnect it from the inverter and plug this into my house mains so you can see a pure sine wave that has noise on it. And now if you look at the top of the sine wave, you can definitely see that it's not smooth and rounded, that there's some fluctuations in there. That's noise coming in on the AC line. I'm not sure what device in my house it is on. I'll probably do a follow-up video where I try to figure that out. So which inverters have you tried? Let me know in the comments and let me know how they worked out for you. Thanks for watching.